And welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Dirt to Dust presented by Outlaw Offroad. It is Friday, which would generally mean the Friday mailbag, where Caleb goes and scours the internet and generally stupid Facebook groups and finds questions uh, for me to answer. <laughs> just, just one stupid group, but... but there is the one stupid group. <laughs> there, yeah, there's really one dumb one. But sometimes this is also Friday is when we reserve uh, for our special episodes which is what mm -hmm. we are going to do today, which we are going to talk about uh, Outlaw Off-Road Trail Days at Windrock Park coming up in September. I uh, had a little bit of information we put out on that on the Wednesday episode, but as I say to there, I was working diligently to try to get stuff uh, nailed down, planned out, all that good stuff. We now have that. Uh, we, have, mm -hmm. uh, we have everything official with our charity group that we're going to be benefiting we have everything official with windrock park where we're going to be getting some cool stuff there so we'll go into those details um but before we go into that we're going to lead off this episode um with something that came out yesterday right or maybe two days ago a couple days ago um, um i want to so say i, I saw the article for the first time yesterday yeah. it came out this week um final edition final fantasy 17 the jeep wrangler <laughs> 392 <laughs> We're going to talk about that just a little bit, just because it did come out. We want to talk about it a little bit, see if we think it's dumb or if it's actually a good idea from Stellantis. So uh, with that in mind, we will jump right into this Friday episode. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? <laughs> This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to, to Dust. Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. So let's talk about the final, final, final edition. We 392. Know. Does anybody know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <sighs> Doug, I saw an article the other day that I kind of, luckily I'm not a 392 owner, so it doesn't hit me as hard. And I definitely did not go out and buy a final edition 392 for 2024, even though I did see several people who did that and they touted it. They're like, oh my God, I've got, I've got the last 392 on order. Like this thing's going to be incredible. Like it's the last badged edition 392. And then Solantis drops a little bomb this week and um, sends out an article that uh, they are now doing not just a 2024 final edition, but now they're doing a 2024 five final edition with the addition of a new color. <laughs> um, so this is what I want to talk about this week. I, I think this is going to upset some people uh, for sure. 2024 and, for sure. Yeah. Cause if, if you bought the final edition thinking you were getting a final edition only to realize there's another year model after yours, yeah. it's newer that might have a couple more upgrades. Who knows? Um, you bought a type. Yeah. Um, it's yeah it's just it's a lot um so let's dive right into this and and just kind of check out the final final edition uh 2025 and we'll, we'll get into the new color as well here in just a second but let's take a look at specs i know you've gone over the spec sheet so it's let's, the uh, freaking same let's, let's take a look at that <laughs> right it's the same uh, jeep minus some stuff like Minus very few things. If actually. you bought a 2024 final i'm i'm sorry like i can't even talk crap to you because you bought a typo like I, I, I and I know I, I think I know why they did it. Like you're not going to find a more profitable vehicle um, sale, you know, sticker price as it relates to actual cost than the 392 yeah. Wrangler. Um, no. You're just not going to find it. I mean, you're talking 30 to forty thousand dollars over a a comparably equipped three six or two zero. Mm -hmm. and and well above um arguably what might even cost even more to make is the four by e and that yeah. is that is like 80 percent profit because you're still putting a motor in there i mean motor for motor it's not a huge production cost for mopar um what it costs to make the three six versus what it actually costs to make 
um, the 392, uh, you could make the argument that actually the four by E would cost more. Um, yeah. And, and I could, and, and I could see that argument for sure. Um, but then to be, I mean, you know, these are going to be north of a hundred K. It's insane. Yeah, actually, um, I, I did a little bit of digging around on the interwebs here and I want to say I found one dealership that was advertising, Hey, get on our list. Like we'll get you with the 2025 t- final edition. And I want to say that MSRP started at 99,185 yep. plus an 1895 destination charge. There's might be a markup on that from a dealership. So we're talking the first MSRP plus destination for a Wrangler that is figures. actually nor- uh, of yeah. north of North of hundred thousand. Absolutely. Um, and what does that get you? That gets you. It gets you uh, less than what you got on a 2024. Technically, yes. Well, you think about it. They're, uh, they're not going to do. So the thing, a couple of little things that they made, what were the special? We're going to give you that for 2024 was the the toolkit. Okay, cool thing. Yeah, I mean, the, whatever. 80, 83 piece toolkit. I, I, can't, mm-hmm. I can't see that an auto trader 10 years from now being like, I'm selling a 2024 yeah. final edition and it still <laughs> has the original tool bag. Um, <laughs> and then you yeah, had that no. that trip, what they call the, uh, the triple hoop triple hoop grill guard um yeah basically the bumper hoop basically yeah basically it's a hoop on a bull bar um yeah so i what are you gonna get for 2025 i think they did that in a nod to the 2024s to kind of still make you feel Mm kind of special on the 2024 um i don't know man i I think i would have i think they missed on the marketing on this i think if you're going to if you're going to do it, call it something else. Call it like the redo or call it, give it a name or something. Yeah. Give it a number. Like, like I get why they're doing it because there's a massive market for the 392. And when they make them, they sell them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I get that. And it's stupid profitable. And if the government would let them, they'd probably still keep making them. They'd absolutely. Keep oh, yeah. Them. Absolutely. They wouldn't um, slow down on that. They wouldn't slow down. Why, why would um, you? That's capitalism. Yeah. But they have no, to because I, of the I agree, though. standards. Yeah. Uh, I agree that they should have named it something else. Maybe done like the uh, like the Challenger did the the jailbreak edition yeah. and allow you to do like uh, release all the colors, release all the combinations. You mm-hmm. want bikini pearl with the Rubicon Extreme package, and like they should have just kind of gone it all out. Like, yes, we're going to do one more run Agreed. for twenty twenty five. We're yeah, not going to yeah. call it the final, but it's not going to be badged as a final. But it's just going to be kind of a wide open ordering system. We're going to get rid of whatever we got left. Here you go. And uh, I think that would have been really cool. Yep. Or if they did a true final edition um, or just continuation of the final edition, maybe the 2025 is special in that it's got 20 extra horsepower or yeah. it comes with a Tune new it. exhaust. Call or, it a last call. Call it the last yeah, call. Yeah, a last call. Yeah, no, a last call would be cool. But give me something to make it a last yep. call. Uh, to make that worth a hundred K um, that's, that's a lot of money. It just, I, you know, they don't care, right? They no. know they're going to sell mm-hmm. them. They don't care. They don't care what yeah, you or absolutely. I, or they don't generally care what the general public thinks as long as the needle is moved and they sell it. And let's be honest uh, because of that, everybody's talking about it and generally on social media, negative stuff travels faster than positive stuff. So more people are going to know the 2025 is coming. It's going to drive up. It's going to drive up recognition. It's going to drive up awareness. And if you drive up recognition and awareness, you drive up uh, the demand. And if you drive up the demand, you drive up the price. And they can justify the 99K, which is go ahead and say 100K. And then dealerships, if they're smart, I don't like it, but they're probably going to use it as justification to put, um, you know, some kind of non-refundable deposit on it. Um, They're going to do some kind of some kind of market adjustment. I or think, a 10K I think you'll dealer see price that. adjustment. Yeah. They're not happy that they can't charge market adjustments anymore and that they're basically having to give away gladiators and some of the Wranglers. Mm-hmm. So I think you're going to see this as a way that they're going to try and make up some of that, some of that lost, um, some of that lost cash flow. Yeah, absolutely. The other idea I had about this is that the final edition, the badged final editions didn't sell as well as they thought they would. So they had a whole bunch sitting there, ready to go and they're like hey, we'll run this one more year <laughs> i mean it's possible uh, i was i was having this conversation the other day and i had this conversation when i was looking at buying the four by e and i looked around mm-hmm. and for about 30 seconds i thought about just buying a 392 and mm-hmm. i looked around and you're getting to use 392s in the upper 50s to low 60s with low yeah. miles and like these things are not which means in about two years i can afford one <laughs> right and, and and it'll be it'll you know they'll be you're talking you're going to get them into the 40s pretty soon 
Um, oh, you're going to get into the club, upper 40s, low 50s, probably in the next 18 months. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, and I don't think, I think some people think they're going to hold on to them and charge more because they're going to be not made anymore. I got news for you. A 21, 22, 23, nobody cares that they're not made anymore. It's just going to be another used vehicle with a V8 in it. Like, if that was the case, then the Grand Cherokees with the 5.7 would be would be crazy. Now, if you got a Trackhawk, you know, with a freaking Hellcat in it, that's different. That's a rare motor. But because they made them, now you're going to have 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. You're going to have five model years of it. There's tens of thousands of these Jeeps out there. They're not rare. I mean, they're not a dime a dozen, but they're not rare. And they're certainly not rare enough to justify people in the used market trying to upcharge for them. So it'll be interesting to see, but I can tell you, I would, I would very, I would not be surprised at all to see some of these probably, I think you'll start seeing it maybe fall of 25. You're going to see used 392s in the low fifties, high forties. I think that's going to happen. Sign um, me up. And cause I those looked, are probably I not going to have one. that many. I, I, <laughs> I thought about it. Have that many miles on them either. So, well, the only reason uh, I didn't do it is because, you know, we already had so many V8s in the, in the brand. And yeah. I said, well, everybody kind of, I can, you know, that's just kind of expected. So I went and did the four by E um, because nobody expected it. And what was the first mm-hmm. thing everybody asked me? Uh, why didn't you buy a 392? <laughs> to make you ask that question. Yeah. And it, so, you know, uh, desired desired uh, outcome achieved. So um, I think at some point, I mean, honestly, if, I, if I'm honest, will I buy a 392 after I get rid of the four by E? Probably. I mean, yeah, probably. I just like them. Um, I mean, there, there's some I like the look. Them, so I, I like the aggressive styling. Yeah, I like Obviously, them. the engine is is the big reason, but just for what sure. it gets for the trim. Now, I probably wouldn't buy a 2024 392 mm-hmm. just because I really don't like the red leather. Yeah, uh, yeah. But get a get a 21, 22, mm-hmm. 23. Uh, slap the 24 grill on. Call it a day. Uh, if I if truthfully, and this is if I can find an anvil used anvil 392 in the coming years. At fifty or below, you know, fifty five or you below, will. I I absolutely will yeah. do whatever it takes to own that. Because well, that you and I is, are going to fight over it like, because that's my preferred color too. <laughs> so. uh, speaking of of colors, though, the one cool thing that is actually unique for the twenty twenty five is that Jeep is releasing Fathom Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a <laughs> of all things, it is a Chrysler Pacifica color. So it's a it's a deep blue pearl with a little tinge of teal in it, um, maybe some green undertone. It looks really cool. It's somewhere in between aqua, teal, and deep blue. Mm-hmm. I think it looks awesome. Um, <clears throat> think bikini, but a little bit darker. A little bit darker. And yeah, yeah. And, and I don't know. There. It's not my. I think that'll color. be pretty cool. I think it's like a dark turquoise. Um, mm-hmm. but I think th- I think a lot will get sold. I think that is a yeah. You know, you know how it is. I mean, you can see it in cars. You can see it in motorcycles. You can see it in, you know, bikes, the stuff that gets painted in different colors. You can see as the trends go and mm-hmm. the variations of blue green is, is, is hot right now, um, oh, yeah. as is variations of like metallic colors. So like bronze mm-hmm. colors, copper colors, silver, you know, the colors of, of coins. Right. Um, yeah. That that's coming around. Those are kind of your two hot colors right now. Anything that has to do with blue. And anything that has to do with like those those elemental colors, so bronze, copper, gold, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, and that's just the yeah. thing right now. A couple of years ago, it was you know everything red, and it was you yeah. know and it all it's all cyclical, but that's kind of hot right now. So um, I definitely get that color, and you're right. The only only time I remember seeing that was on like a high trim Pacifica. It was a color Chrysler mm-hmm. color. Um, yeah, and so, I'll I'll be sure to to put that up as like a, a flash graphic over yeah so i think it'll be a cool color i could see it uh, yeah you build that out and like black out the wheels or something like that or maybe even mm-hmm. like a bronze off to kind of mess with it i could see if you if you build I, I that think right that it could look pretty that sweet. and raw aluminum similar to the jeep that um oh, yeah. outlaw charlotte just finished yep. for yep. one of yep. your your he started with you first chase per year yeah chase yeah um Hey, Chase. But to do that color with a lot of a raw aluminum like Chase did selectively, he did uh, steering, control arms, wheels, mm-hmm. fenders, bumper, stuff like that. Um, and it came out awesome, but his was white. But I think that that same kind of mindset with this Fathom Blue would look really, really, really sweet. I still remember the first phone call Chase ever made to Outlaw Off-Road. I talked to him. I remember that. <laughs> he didn't even live. We did it in Greensboro, but that was back before Charlotte was open. So he actually lives, I think, yeah. in upstate South Carolina. Yeah, he does. Um, mm-hmm. So, so Chase, if you're listening, you're going to be the trifecta, the first trifecta customer 
like the first natural trifecta. So he came to Greensboro uh, because he wanted to be built by outlaw offer. He wanted to be, you know, part of the nation. And we, we love that. Yeah. So he came to Greensboro, even living in upstate. And then knowing that, you know, I think I was the first one that told him, I was like, hey, man, we're going to be opening a Charlotte shop. So now he's come to Charlotte a few times. But he's also live, he lives way closer to the new shop where it's going to be opening in uh, mm-hmm. Greer, Greenville, Spartanburg. So I imagine we will see Chase <laughs> as a customer at, uh, at Greenville, Spartanburg, too. So he'll be the first yeah. natural trifecta. Um, yeah, natural trifecta. Other, maybe other than Kevin out of Greensboro, our brand ambassador, Kevin Long out of Greensboro with the Mojito Mamba. Uh, you can follow him. What's he's at Mojito Mamba, right? On Instagram, or is it, it's either at Mojito Mamba or Mojito Mamba JL. Uh, I can't remember it. It is one of those, uh, but yeah. he's always uh, posting and always travels to so go follow him. But so solid dude there. He's been, he's been a friend of the company, um, and mine personally for several years now. Um, uh, mm-hmm. but I remember I met him when he had his, uh, orange JK. And then he bought an orange JL and then we did a little bit to it and he did a little bit to it. He does a lot of his own work, actually. Uh, we always mm-hmm. do the stuff he can't do, but he's always buying his parts from us. And then he got that Mojito, that 2019, I think, 2019 Mojito JL Rubicon in his bin. You want to talk about a Jeep commercial, dude. <laughs> that thing has been everywhere. everywhere. Done everything on not a crazy build. He's never swapped mm-hmm. axles. He's been running 40 since like day one, like that Jeep right there. He doesn't, he lets other people drive it. Like he had a girl with him in Moab. Mm-hmm. He, he didn't even drive it most of the time. She did. He's just like, <laughs> man, this Jeep is just going to do Jeep things. And if she did, what was it like? Um, Dolph Lundgren and rock. If she dies, she dies. <laughs> <laughs> I like dude. respect the yeah. hell out of that dude, but you can't miss him. He's the Mojito JL with the bronze uh, outlaw yep. off-road logo on the side and the bronze uh, bead locks on there with the 40 inch, the 40 inch tires. Um, which is so another yeah. really cool color combination uh, too. That dude, one of one work, of the best colors works, Jeep works ever came out with. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And he would tell See, you that. Now, that would have been a cool final edition. Like Agreed. bring back, bring back Mojito mm-hmm. for a year. Bring back. I mean, if you're going to charge that um, much, let the people choose their own yeah. color. Right. Open up the color bank. Like let do yeah. a, do do Nacho again. Do Mojito. Do pull out those one year colors that people really love that didn't like. They just. You don't see a lot of them because they Do weren't, an they weren't a lot made. But like making an upcharge, yeah. you can have. This is a true last call. If it's ever been put on a Jeep Wrangler, you can have the color. Hmm. Yeah. Tell me, people wouldn't pay like, an upcharge I, I, for that. I could think of a couple colors dude. off the bat. That dude, I'd like, order one. Yeah, because you don't know how many uh, are going to be top. made. You're you're limited to how many people choose uh, mm-hmm. uh, what you choose, and then there's an order yeah. bank, and so you know. By you say okay, order banks open September one and they close November thirty, so you've got mm-hmm. ninety days in there to put your order in. So at the end, mm-hmm. and, and you know up front, okay, we're not going to start production until December or yeah. or January, whatever that time frame is. We're not going to start production until next February, whatever it is. You give ninety days of an order bank to open, and then you know, okay, I have one hundred and seventy seven anvils to produce. I have two hundred and thirteen ocean ocean blue metallics. I have. 64 mm-hmm. mojitos you know exactly what you're going to do so you can do them in color runs you know mm-hmm. you can do the ones that are the highest color to low you can do all that don't tell me that Solantis can't do that um yeah so again it's just an example of how i don't you know but again they're gonna sell and they know they that. are they're gonna sell they're gonna make Stellantis a ton of freaking money millions and millions of dollars hand, money hand over fist so you know good on them for bringing it back i mean i'm glad they did i like the v8 so um, and long term, it's just going to dilute the available pool of Wranglers down in a couple of years, which is going to make mm-hmm. it easier. Like you said, it's going to make it easier for your average consumer to buy one in in yeah. a year, in one to two years. So it all work, it'll yeah. all work out. So yeah, we're looking forward to that. It's about all the time um, I'm going to devote to that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to devote an entire episode to that. <laughs> no uh, I did want to talk about it. So there we go. We talked about it. If you uh, if you ordered a 2024 final edition, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, there is now a 2025 final yeah. final edition. You do get a winch uh, though. If, if yeah, <laughs> you, you get the winch package and, and the extreme and the 35s. I don't know. Either way, uh, if you do order the 2025, shoot us a couple pictures and let us see if there's anything truly different about it. Maybe they snuck a couple things in there that they didn't tell everybody. So. Moving forward to that, the real reason for this episode and the big, big, big announcement that we have, uh, I am super excited to officially talk about this. Uh, I know we've mentioned it on the podcast before, but we have put some things in place since the last episode. Things have been moving. The ball has been set in motion rapidly. What's going on? <laughs> so we are we are now prepared to officially make Outlaw Off-Road Trail Days at Windrock Park a thing. 
Uh, it is going to be September 12th, 13th, and 14th uh, at Winbrock Park in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. Um, we've got it scheduled now to be able to do a kickoff party. We're going to be doing a kickoff party at Crafters Brew and Market in Oak Ridge, which is a place that um, Outlaw Offered has frequented many times before. Really, really cool venue. Great inside space, great outside space, uh, room to accommodate. They've even got a little food in the market and a little building across the street there. Uh, we may even have, I'm, I'm reaching out to some food trucks and maybe even try to get a band there for the kickoff party uh, on Thursday night. And then Friday and Saturday, we are going to run trails. Uh, participants will be able to choose the group uh, in which they do. If they want to be an intermediate on Friday and a beginner on Saturday or vice versa or advanced or whatever, we are going to have multiple beginner groups. We are going to have multiple intermediate groups, and we are going to have multiple advanced groups. Um, we're, we'll probably be releasing numbers on those. We are thinking we are going to open it up to right around 60 participants, um, and then everybody else there would be outlaw people. Um, trail guides, spotters, leaders, tail gunners, all that. Um, you know, so 15 to 20 outlaw rigs and then 50 to 60 generic participant rigs. Um, the big thing about this event, um, up until a few days ago, that was all it was going to be. Um, but unfortunately, there was some drama that came out over an event that was supposed to benefit. Um, and I'm not going to get too much into the drama, but there was an event out there that was specifically made to benefit a certain veterans charity and outlaw offer works almost exclusively with veteran and first responders charities. That is, we are almost exclusive when it comes to uh, actual company backed charities. The individual stores might back something else, but as far as I'm concerned, we are primarily focused on veteran law enforcement, and first responders. And this event was supposed to do that. And there was some issues there. There was some drama. There was some money issues and all that. So we said, you know, there's got to be there's got to be a simpler way to do this, a way to make it about the charity and not about the event, that the event is just a, you know, a symptom of doing something for the charity. So I thought about it and I reached out uh, to Hero Offred, uh, Armando Verdugo, who uh, him and Ray, uh, I don't really know Ray, but I know Armando very well known him for several years. And I reached out and I said, you know, um, really sucks that you had to go through that drama, but I think I've got an idea. I think I got a way to make this drama free and and we could do this the way I think it should have been done from the get-go instead of having me have an event that is a trying that is attempting to make money not that there's a problem with an event trying to make money um, the problem is when you try to make money off of the, the the charity part of it and then you can't pay the charity money because you had to rob Peter to pay Paul and that sucks um, but it happens unfortunately this ain't the only event that's been called out like that this this is just the one this week but there have been other events so I said you know the way to do this is to just say, okay, we're going to have an event and we're not going to charge anybody. I'm not going to make, I'm not going to collect a dime. I'm not going to make a dime. I'm probably going to lose money by doing this. <laughs> um, but I don't care because I want to go wheeling with my friends and, and I want to go to a cool place and I want to help, you know, people that deserve the help and I want to help a charity that deserves the help. So I said, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to open it up and we're going to post a link uh, probably next week. Uh, it'll be, you know, we'll tell you a link and all of that, um, on the next, uh, episode and you're going to be able to go sign up and you're going to have to sign up, but your entry fee is proof of donation of $250 per rig, not per person, just per rig to hero off-road. You will donate $250 minimum. You can donate 300, you can donate a thousand. I don't care, but as long as it's a minimum of $250, you show us proof of that. Uh, we'll give a date for that that you have to show proof by you're in. If there's a spot open in that group and you have your proof of donation to Hero Off-Road, you're going to come wheeling with us. Um, and it's not that we're charging you to do it. This is we are doing this for charity. And it just so happens we're going to do something that's fun. So um, I did talk to Armando. He's going to have – they are going to make a specific link for us for this event that we will be able to share. And people will be able to just go click there, make the donation. You download the screenshot. You email it to us. Um, we'll have an email address for that. I think it's info at the outlaw .com. You'll email us that proof. And then we check you off on our little, on our little spreadsheet and we'll give you a date. We'll give people like a month or so to do that. It's not, you know, again, we're trying to make this easy for us. We're trying to make it easy for hero off-road where they just collect the money. We just want hero off-road to have the money that they are deserved, um, to go out and do the things that they do for veterans. You know, the adventure therapy, the outdoor stuff, the fishing stuff they're doing, the race car stuff they're doing, all the stuff that they're doing, you know, they need funds to do that. And they're doing it right. 
guys. They, you know, I think they keep their operating costs like below 5% of the money that comes in. So you're talking about a charity where 95 plus percent of, of the proceeds, and we're not talking about the, well, the net proceeds. Now we're talking about everything. We're talking 95 plus percent of every dollar that comes in minus credit card fees, right? Uh, is going to these, these projects and these things that Hero Off-Road is doing. So um, I know there's a lot of great charities out there, but I'm super familiar with this one, um, which is why I'm so, I want to be so close to it. And I know Armando, I know how Armando is with Hero Off-Road. Um, and it is, it is just an absolute passion. His, he doesn't make any money doing it. He has a day job. Like him and Ray Poole, they don't, they don't get a salary. This is not like, you know, not that there's anything wrong with Wounded Warriors, but Wounded Warriors is a deal where people get paid to work there. Uh, Hero Off-Road is not that way. It's just not. And I, and I, I love that about that. So that is going to be the deal. Um, we are probably going to have somewhere between six and eight groups. Um, eight people will be able to sign up per group. That leaves, you know, two outlaw rigs per group at minimum for, you know, trail leader, spotter, gunner, whatever. We will have some media out there. I'm not promising people media. Not like this other place. Uh, we will not. We will not be doing that. We will have some media out there, primarily for our purposes. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I will cool to go obviously be out there the with absolutely. cameras in tow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, so we will have that. Yeah. Um, Windrock has agreed to give us our own little meeting area, our own little meetup spot. Um, they may even they may even give us our own little section of porta potties if you need to go to the bathroom before going out. So it's, you know, we're going to make it, we're just going to try to make it super easy, not a super huge event, also not a super small event. And, you know, people other than making your donation to hero, all you gotta do is get yourself there, pay your park fees to Windrock park, bring your trail snacks, no alcohol in Windrock park. Um, and just come out and wheel. We'll have guys leading trails, you know, don't worry about, we'll have, we'll have groups all the way down to, I just bought this last week and I still have the temp tag on it. So no worries about any kind of level of rig. We'll have everything from I brought it off the lot to I don't care about body damage. In fact, I welcome it. So, I and mean, we'll have, we will cover, we'll cover everything. We have a lot of people in Outlaw that are super, super experienced at Wind Rock Park. Um, for a lot of years, that place was my second home. So, and I'd like to get back to that. So, um, it's going to be a really, really cool event. Um, so, there will be information up in the next couple of days. I know Caleb was, develop, was finishing up development on the web form yesterday. Um, so that is looking pretty good. Um, we've already got everything set with um, Hero Off-Road. You will see the event up on the Windrock Park event calendar probably next week. Uh, we will have the link posted to sign up. And then the only other thing I'm waiting to find out is if we're going to have a food truck and a band at the kickoff party at Crafters. Uh, that's really it. But that's just, that's not going to determine whether or not people go. So uh, be thinking about that kickoff party September 12th, that Thursday evening. Wheeling on Friday, wheeling on Saturday, and then everybody can pack up and go home on Sunday. Everybody can have that travel day. If you're taking time off from work or whatever, you can at least take off, you know, maybe come out there Thursday night or take off Thursday and Friday and you're back at work on Monday. So try to help that a little bit. You can also just wheel Saturday. You can just wheel Friday. You can wheel Friday and Saturday. The donation amount is the same. I know I'm going to get that question. Whether you donate yeah. just for Friday, just for Saturday or both, the entry is the same. Proof yeah. of donation of $250 to hero off-road that is not coming to us we have nothing no. to do with that don't call me up going can i give you my 250 dollars? <clears throat> no you cannot <laughs> no you cannot no um and that is per vehicle not per person per vehicle um, not per person that yeah. is correct um so if you want to bring the family and, and the kids and, and mm -hmm. the wife and whoever bring the dog out and go wheeling that's totally fine load the jeep down come out it's still just 250 dollars yep. donation and just like Doug said, we will have multiple groups of multiple levels. Uh, so we will have probably a couple groups of beginners, mm -hmm. a couple groups of intermediate, and maybe one or two groups of advanced, advanced yep. uh, for the people who like to do dumb stuff. Um, Doug, did you mention at one point we might run, uh, so there might be a little uh, Walden's Ridge action? Uh, I mean, Walden's going to be a group. Um, so probably <laughs> what will happen, whatever schedule you see for Friday will be the same thing mm -hmm. on Saturday. So okay, so there'll be sense. a minimum of two groups across everything, two beginner, two intermediate, two advanced. So basically you could do, you know, beginner group one on Friday, beginner group two on Saturday. So you'll go on all the beginner trails that we have. Um, so it gives the opportunity if you like a trail and you're like, oh, I'm not going to be there till Saturday. That's fine. The trail schedule is the same both days. So we're just going to split them up. Now, what I might do is do four intermediate groups only because that's where kind of the meat potatoes is. That's where a lot of people wheel. So we'll, we'll come up with two trail schedules for beginner, 
So if you, whatever you do on Friday, there'll be another one to do on Saturday where they're not the same pieces. But you can flip flop those. So if if you can do a beginner one, then beginner two, you can do beginner two, then beginner one. You could do beginner one and then intermediate three. It's whatever you want to do. Uh, but those schedules will be the same. So you can kind of work it to your schedule and we will release those. We'll have dedicated radio frequencies um, both for uh, for each group. So those who have communications, uh, I can tell you right now, it's probably going to be uh, GMRS or a radio that can be programmed to GMRS frequencies just because people just have that. You, we don't do CB. So we'll probably do, we'll release frequencies that are the same as GMRS channels. So we'll release it as, you know, hey, we're doing GMRS 6 or blank frequency. So it's the same. So if you got a bow fang, you got a rugged, you know, a rugged that can do that. We will also probably have a time that you can come out early um, with certain radios and we will program those for people. We do have the ability to program certain radios quickly and we can do that. I've got some race radio program files and all that. So if you have like a, you know, I always recommend for a handheld rugged, uh, rugged radio V3. Yeah. You have a rugged radio yeah. V3, bring it out. We can program that for you. It'll be free of charge. Uh, we just want everybody to be as, have as much fun as possible, do it as easy as possible. Uh, but trail comms are a good thing. So we'll have that available as well. Um, just trying to do it a little different, just trying to make it easy, mm-hmm. make it fun, um, but benefit a great, great charity at the same time. And that's going to be including outlaw. I will also be donating a minimum of $250 yep. to hero. So my Jeep can go. Um, everybody yep. in outlaw, we've already had that discussion. And, you know, everybody who's coming, we're all going to do the donation. Uh, we've mm-hmm. even got some companies that we're talking to about them, you know, kind of being a sponsor of the event. But the only the only cost to sponsor the event for them, make a donation to Hero Offroad. No, yeah. they have to donate more. <laughs> the companies have to donate more. <laughs> yeah. But if they want to do that, yeah. then they're certainly able to do that. And we're going to we're going to show them some media love and, and and show them appreciation for stepping up and helping donate to Hero Offroad. But that's it. Like, like again, I say, you know, Outlaw Offroad myself, we will collect zero dollars and zero cents because that is not what this is about that is not what this yeah, is about. It's about helping it's helping about helping hero, hero off-road uh, uh and the side benefit of that is we get to reel some really great trails in a really great area of the country and the weather at that time of the year is not super hot it's just going to be awesome pray for no rain because god i hate wind when it's wet yeah um and it's well, just going to be a September great September is typically the a dry season for us so that shouldn't be too bad right. it should be should be um good. should be good yeah we've um, done that we did yeah, a, no, we're we did a 9-11 ride there a couple years ago. We did, we've did. we done yeah. a couple rides mm-hmm. at Windrock in mid-September, and they've always been awesome. <clears throat> always been great. Love yeah, it. it's not too hot. I mean, it's not definitely not cold by, by then, uh, but it's not overbearingly hot. Uh, the big thing is, and also, is this is also kicking off Outlaw back to kind of its roots of doing wheeling events like this. This is what Outlaw got really famous for. One of the reasons why I looked at, you know, looked to you for employment. <laughs> so I was like, man, I really want to work for another off-road company, but I don't want to do just any run of the mill, you know, mom and pop shop. Um, but I also don't want to work for some giant conglomerate cor- corporation either. So seeing that and seeing how often Outlaw went out and wheeled and how they, you know, dealt with their customers and just how they did events that led me to want to work for Outlaw. And me now too. we're able to do that again, which I'm super excited for. But also be able to help out Hero Offroad. Like you said, Armando's a super du- good dude. Ray's a super good dude. And I was a little bit worried when I heard the drama that the next event that that guy was planning was going to be shut down. And then Hero is now missing out on a pretty big lump of donation yeah. <clears throat> that may affect their trips this year, which I I definitely don't want to see what happen. Uh, so, and that's exactly what happened. So, I'm excited to be able to to give that back to them and make sure that they've got their programs running. Um, they've got some some awesome awesome stuff. Um, we will release all of that. Uh, there will be a dedicated web page for that. You can actually check out HeroOffroad uh, dot org. Uh, see what they're about. We'll do a little blurb on our website about them. Have some links, but we'll have a direct link for that donation. Uh, and like you said, I'm I'm just super excited about it. this. Is going to be a, such a fun time. The LJ is. I, I'm going to say. There's like a ninety to ninety five percent chance that the LJ is going to be no, there. Just do I'm it. Just say it's a hundred percent chance. Lock it down. <laughs> do it. You just got I'm, finished I'm with make this sure, whole blurb yeah. about coming to work at Outlaw Off Road because you could wheel. You don't even have a freaking Jeep to wheel. Get it done, son. I know. All right. I'm. I'm gonna. All right. I'll just. I'll say this right here. I'm gonna do absolutely everything in my power. No. 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 Don't equivocate. <laughs> Commit to the world. Commit to the world. That LJ will be at Trail Days. One way or another, it'll be there at Trail Days. Stop giving yourself wiggle room. You're like a freaking politician. <laughs> One way or the other. 
Just cue the song. Stop it. <laughs> no, there. <laughs> Oh, well, I, right, no I promise everyone saying, I will get. I will work on getting Caleb's one hundred percent commitment to having the LJ there. Um, I will have at least one Jeep there. I'll either have the four by or the race car. The race car is going to depend on transportation and then um, what happens at Crandon. Um, last time I jumped it twenty times in a row, it uh, spun an axle tube. So uh, we we we've we've got that mostly fixed now. So it'll be ready. It'll be way stronger than it was. Um, we're going we're gonna to beef that old Curry 70 up and make her race ready for Crandon. And then I'm going to absolutely friggin' send it. And then, um, you know, if it's in one piece, she might be, she might be out there. I might, I might run some trails with it. If the weather's good enough, yeah. um, I've wheeled the car before. It'd be super fun. It's super fun to wheel. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll let the wife drive the four by E and I'll drive the, maybe I'll let somebody there else drive go. the four by E and I'll drive the race car. I don't know, but maybe yeah. I'll be out there, but I'll be out there for sure. in at least the four by E. Um, and hopefully something else. Hopefully the race car. We'll see if it's if it's a little bit hurt. Maybe we'll be bringing it out there just for display purposes. Depends on the weather. Depends on you know what happens at Crandon. But there's really only one race this year after Crandon, and that's nationals in Oklahoma. But that's not till October. So, um, it doesn't the car doesn't have any commitments to be anywhere else to race other than those two around that time. One about two weeks before. One about two or three weeks after. So, um, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So, uh, stay tuned. We will release information on. Uh, our Facebook page, the Dirt to Dust podcast Facebook page, uh, as well as we will be putting up information, um, you know, kind of in congruence with Outlaw Offroad at theoutlawoffroad.com. Um, so we'll put out information on both places. We may even filter some of that down to the individual Outlaw Offroad site location so that we get more people. Uh, but I do have a feeling if we're going to release it that wide, I think those 60 some spots are going to fill up pretty fast. Um, because again, it's not like it's an application process, or you know, it's a pretty low entry to get or come to the event. Um, Two hundred fifty dollars a hero off road is nothing, guys. It's really nothing. Um, and don't and don't think of it as you're you know you're paying to come wheel. You're not. You're just you're buying the right to come to the super fun super fun event. And none of us should have any problems, especially knowing that a hundred percent of your dollars are going to hero off road and filling that gap of funding. Um, and who knows if this goes well, this could be the template. This could be what we do, uh, going forward as we, you know, we pick a charity a couple times a year and we work with a charity and we go wheeling. Maybe we go to s'more, maybe we go to Windrock, maybe we go to, I know there's some people that want to go to like hot springs and Hawks pride. And, you know, maybe we go up to Pennsylvania, who knows, maybe we do an out West trip where we go to Colorado. who knows. I know there's a route in planning. I'll tease it. I'll go ahead and tease it. There is a planning for an overland event an outlaw off-road overlanding, um, so we're going to call it, we're probably just going to call it O three. 3 So the letter O with the three outlaw off-road overland. Um, and it's going to be a 99% off-road route leaving Colorado Springs and ending in Moab. Yes. <laughs> yes. First time I've said that. 100% yes. Yep. First time yeah. I've said that publicly. Um, all the mountain passes, um, mm -hmm. but no super hard rock stuff. Like it's going to be very, it'll be like overland plus overland with just a little yeah. bit of rock. Uh, but not much. Yeah. And um, I've got that route pretty much laid out already. I've been working on that route, knowing that I want to do it. Um, the holdup is going to be with the schedule next year with Mob. Um, mm -hmm. The plan right now is Mob Colorado. And if we do Mob Colorado, that might put off that till 2026. But we, we will see. Because when you do the mountain passes in Colorado, if you're going to wheel in Colorado and do anything like that, you are limited to about 90 days out of the year. So yeah. we'll have to do, I'd either have to do both or I, we'll figure it out. But mm -hmm. that is coming at some point is going to be outlaw off-road overland. And I'm already planning that first route of all off-road or 90, it's like 95% off-road. Leaving Colorado yeah. Springs, ending in Moab, Utah, sometime in the, sometime in the early summer to late summer. So you're probably talking yeah. mid-June to mid-August, something like that. Uh, like right mm -hmm. now, you know, we're in the end of June, be a perfect time to go. So yeah. be looking for that. But right now we are all about the trail days. So outlaw for trail days at Windrock Park. Um, more information coming, but you guys, everybody now has kind of the general gist of what's going on. So be looking forward to that. Mark your calendars. We will open up. We will try to do everything we can to have everything. Uh, Caleb, do you think we can have registration opened um, when we drop the podcast next Wednesday? I think we can do that. Absolutely. Let's do that. Let's plan Absolutely. on that. Uh, opening registration next Wednesday when the podcast drops. So sometime midday, Wednesday, the, what is it? 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th? Yeah, 25th. 
25th or 26th, whatever that Wednesday is in June, last Wednesday in June, uh, we will release the link and we will blast it wide. Um, but make sure to get on there because I just don't think with as wide as we're going to push it and as hard as we're, fast as we're going to push it, I think those 60, 60, what is it, 64 spots I think will be, yeah, eight times mm-hmm. eight if we do eight groups. So yeah. 64 spots is the plan right now. I think those 64 spots are going to fill up pretty quick. But also go ahead and be prepared. And, and you can go ahead and do it as soon as you're in. Go ahead and feel free to make that donation. We will post that link to to the Hero Off Road, and we'll let everybody know. You know, sometime probably by, you know, we'll pretty much just require that everybody does it like by the end of July or something. We'll give everybody a month to four to six weeks to get mm-hmm. that donation in to Hero Off Road because there may be a few that have to back out or can't do it or for whatever reason. Right. Um, and we can find our backups from there. So if we get a ton of interest, we will do a short standby list. So we may release that mm-hmm. too. But you know, again, as always, just stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. Make sure you're listening to the episodes. We drop them every Wednesday. We drop them every Friday and uh, be looking for that. So um, outside of that, uh, Caleb, if you don't have anything else, uh, we're just going to wrap this bad boy up for, for the me. day. Yeah, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Okay. So um, again, be looking out for the information. We've got more coming. And as always, we thank everyone for, for listening, for watching all that. Without you guys watching, listening and all that, it'd probably be hard to push events and do stuff. And we want to do that because we want to help as many people as possible. Um, whether it be through Hero Off-Road, whether it be teaching people stuff, talking about stuff, whatever. Uh, So we do thank you guys for tuning in and watching and listening. Make sure to tell your friends and your pets and all your goldfish about the episode. Make them log on and check it out Uh, wherever you may find us, wherever you may watch us, and however you may be accessing us. We thank you. Um, That is where we will leave it for today. Be sure to check us out next Wednesday for the next episode, and also keep on your calendars to follow us for that sign up link for trail days next Wednesday. And until that episode drops, you guys have a great weekend and we will see you on the next episode. You've been listening to the dirt to dust presented by outlaw off road, the premier off road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well, We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.